All right. Uh, hello, grade twelves, and welcome. Uh, continuing on uh, with our next unit, which is on membranes. Deceivingly, a small, simple unit, but there's actually a lot going on in membranes. Um, and again, this is one of those things that connects to everything that we do because everything has membranes. All our cells are bound by membranes and contain organelles that are bound by membranes. So we need to understand how membranes work um, and what they're made of. So that, that's basically what we're breaking this unit down into two things. So first we're going to talk about what are membranes made of, and then we're going to talk about how do things move across membranes. And there's some very complicated but very important stuff in there in the movie. So that other left. First, what are membranes made of? Well, the basic, basic uh, component of a membrane are phospholipids, which we learned about in the biomolecules unit. We learned about phospholipids. Remember, phospholipids are part of the lipid family. And uh, what they, they have, they have a glycol, which is like a, a, a glycol, which was like three carbons, some OH, and OH, and OH, and there was some stuff sticking out here. And then you attach some fatty acids here. Which, uh, which were big, long chains of carbon, big, long chains, and then another big, long chain of carbon, and a little chain, and those were neutral fats, those big, long chains, neutral fats, which you find in, in your fat tissue, in your fat cells, you find new, these neutral fats, and in butter, and in margarine. Um, phospholipids, what they do is they take one of these fatty acids, and instead add a phosphate and a choline group, which is basically like some phosphate and, and a, an amine. And this has a charge. I think this is positive, this is negative. Don't quote me on it, but this is polar. Remember, fatty acids and the whole thing about lipids is they are non-polar. They are hydrophilic, phobic, phobic. Hydrophobic. They don't like water. Oil and water don't mix. Try to put butter in water. It's just going to be gross, actually. Uh, but you're going to see bubbles form like cells, like uh, 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 globs of, of, uh, of butter, butter globs. It won't mix. It won't dissolve. Uh, Nonpolar things won't dissolve in water. And remember, we got a lot of water. There's a lot of water. We're filled with water. Uh, what's unique and about phospholipids is that they have this huge nonpolar region, and then they have this, which is called the polar head. So this area has a charge, and this, because it's polar, because it's got a charge, water can get in here, because remember, water uh, is a polar molecule. It's got, it's uh, positively charged, negatively charged, positively charged, negatively charged. Um, so these fields can interact with each other. So basically, remember we're talking about these electric fields, these like magneto, electromagnetic fields can interact with each other. So that's the unique thing. That's the basic, that's the standard unit of cellular membranes is this phospholipid. And so if we were to draw, what happens is if you take a bunch of these, a glob of phospholipids, pick them up in your hand, you could, they're just a organic molecule and throw them in some water well what's going to happen is they're going to arrange themselves with there's that polar head and the two fatty acid chains and what those are they're gonna do those phospholipids second yeah is they're going to basically arrange themselves in such a way that they never, the fatty acid chains never have to interact with water. So they're all going to face towards the inside. Uh, there's a fatty acid chain for each polar head, and the polar heads stick out. And then what else can happen is they will arrange themselves in such a way so that they form a double bilayer. I'm just going to cheat here. They form a double bilayer.
so that those fatty acid chains never interact. They make this non-polar region and the inside uh, it's got water in it. The outside's got water in it. And that's a cell. That's basically you've made a cell. And these will actually spontaneously form these. And this is what your cells are made of, except, you know, they, they're way bigger. Uh, if we have, do we have a, an image here of, uh, we do have an image of this. Why am I drawing it on the, on, the, on the board when I can just show it to you here in the notes? There we go. It's called a liposome or a micelle. Uh, and that's the... Um, the polar heads and the non-polar tails. And um, if you've zoomed in on a cell membrane, it looks like this. It looks like a layer, a bilayer. There's the polar head, there's the tails. So the interior of a cell membrane is non-polar and the exterior has those polar heads. Now basically what this, this by creating a non-polar region, it's like a wall, it's a border that doesn't allow polar molecules, doesn't allow molecules to pass through. Also, these things are packed together so big things can't pass through. That's what a membrane does. Is it, it's just, it keeps the outside outside and the inside inside and uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. That, that, that's the, so that's the first component. That's the major component and that's how the phospholipids work. The first component are these phospholipids. Uh, but that's not it. If we were just a layer of phospholipids, well, that's not very good. How do things pass through? Some things could pass through. Some uh, neutral molecules so or, or electrically neutral molecules uh, like oxygen, O2, not an oxygen ion, but an O2 atom. So that's basically two oxygens fused together. They're small enough where they could squeeze through that lipid bilayer, and oxygens can move in and out. Now think about why would that be useful to, why would that be good to be able to move oxygen really easily just across uh, the membrane? You think about that, I'm not even gonna tell you. CO2, carbon dioxide, is also electrically neutral. It can dissolve in water and it can live in non-polar non regions. It can also move across this membrane. It can just move, uh, uh, it can, it's small enough where it can squeeze in between these phospholipids. Uh, ammonia, very toxic. We talked about it, so we've talked about it, I think, in the past. Ammonia also is small and can move across uh, the, that, that membrane. Think about why it'd be good for those things to just be able to move without any effort at all. Now, other things though, like glucose, that's a big molecule. Sugars and things are big molecules. Uh, water, water is polar. Water can't cross it because it can't enter this region. It might be small enough, but it can't enter this region. Uh, so glucose, food, uh, other, I don't know, wastes and other things uh, need to be able to move in and out of the membrane and for that you need proteins so in our membrane let's see if we if I can draw so we have a membrane we have our our heads we're gonna build a membrane here We've got our heads our polar heads and our non-polar tails there we go Okay, so we got our non-polar region, our polar heads, and then let's say this is the outside, outside, and this is the cytoplasm, oops, cytoplasm is just the inside, is just the inside of the cell, cytoplasm, so we got the outside and the inside. So next we need proteins, and we have two kinds of proteins on our cell membrane. We've got what are called peripheral proteins. And what peripheral proteins are is, let's just take these guys out here. And they are on one layer of the membrane. They just have the lipid bilayer. They just take up one. Let's take out another one here. These are called peripheral proteins. There's another one there. And what these ones can do, like this guy here, what it can do is uh, it can it can control it can it can link up to the cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton is uh, 
sort of the, the scaffolding structure of cells. So we can anchor organelles to the cell membrane. It can also detect when there's something inside the cell and communicate with our next group of proteins. Out here, these guys out here, they can detect things that are outside of the cell, interact with, thin, with things that are outside of the cell. These guys might also interact with other cells. So there might be another protein here and they link, they merge two cells together. So these cells are held together by these peripheral proteins. Now, then the other kind of protein that we have, and I'm sure you've guessed what it is, if there are peripheral proteins, then there would be integral proteins. Here, let's draw that like that. Uh, if you can see that, yes you can. So this is a protein that spans the lipid bilayer. And what these guys do is they transport things across the lipid bilayer. And they can transport things uh, kind of two ways. Things can just pass through. So for example, the interior here, the amino acids that are facing in into this channel can be polar and therefore hydrophobic. So water, can be like, yay, now I can move in and out of the cell. I can use these, I can use these membranes. Uh, they can also pump things. They can grab stuff and move it down so that things can pass passively or actively. We'll talk about that in the next section more. So we have peripheral proteins, integral proteins. Now, uh, the lipid bilayer, if you've ever seen oil, it's just kind of oily. It's just all this oil floating around. It is the, the, the model that we call the, the, the model for cellular membranes or plasma membranes is called the fluid mosaic model of membranes. And so the fluid part are all these lipids. They make it all fluidy. And the mosaic part are the proteins spread out throughout uh, the membrane. Um, there's, and it's a, so to make the, the, all of these proteins, they just sort of float in this sea of gooey, of, of oily, of oily fluid. Um, but what we have is we have another component, another component. I don't have another color, do I? No. So we're just going to have to, we're going to have to use, I don't know, we'll use blue. Uh, hopefully that doesn't mess you up. And what it is, is we learned about... Uh, this when we talked about lipids in the biomolecules unit is cholesterol remember cholesterol and what cholesterol does cholesterol is a lipid but it's one of those um, it's not a fatty acid chain it's like a steroid lipid and so it's it's uh, in these circles or, or so it will fit because it's a lipid it can go into the nonpolar region and it will enter and sit in the nonpolar region and basically anchor those fatty acid chains. And what it does is it makes, it'll stabilize the fluidy part of the membrane. The more cholesterol you have in a membrane, the firmer the membrane is, the less fluidy it will be. So that's, what, that's the role that cholesterol plays in our cells. Now, there's one more thing that is in membranes and that is carbohydrates, oligosaccharides. Remember, oligosaccharides are like nine to 18 uh, monomers long. And basically what these do is there are special proteins and lipids that will have, ooh, purple, that will have, uh, there we go, that will have a little chain of sugars sitting out front. And what these do is these are recognized by the immune system. The immune system will come along and detect what is the shape. There'll be uh, parts of the immune system that detect this shape. So to make sure that this cell belongs here. So these are for identifiers. They also identify uh, to other cells. So other cells can recognize these cells. That's basically what these oligosaccharides do. And they will be attached to peripheral proteins and to special lipids called oligolipids or oligophospholipids.
those are the components of a plasma layer. Look at that, we built a really lovely plasma layer. Now we can move things, we can anchor ourselves to other things, we can be recognized by other things, we can recognize stuff inside and move things in and out. That's what the plasma layer does. The cell, the layer, the, the membrane, the cell membranes is what's known as a semi-permeable membrane. And just what that means is that it doesn't, it lets only certain, it can control what moves in and out. And that's, you know, if we're doing metabolism, we have to move things in and out. We have to move, uh, we have to move the, 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 the food, the nutrients of metabolism, and we have to move wastes out. So we have to move oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, uh, uh, biomolecules in, nitrogenous wastes out. That's why the cell membrane needs to be, then we need to be able to control the movement of those things. So semi-permeable just means the ability to restrict and permit certain molecules and substances from passing through. Uh, what gives the cell membrane its permeability is the proteins. The proteins control what moves in and out. And then what controls the proteins? I'm gonna let you think about that for a second. What controls the proteins? What controls what proteins you have in the cell membrane? It starts with D, D, DNA. The DNA, your DNA codes for what proteins you have. And depending on which sections of your DNA are encoded, which sections of your DNA are read, uh, will change the makeup of the cell membrane. The DNA determines and what parts of the DNA are read determines. So that's how cells can have different cell membranes because different parts of their DNA are encoded or read and they will have different, you know, if you have, uh, uh, if you have uh, 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 cells that are inside your mouth, for example, you have a, your mouth, it needs to stay wet. It needs to have moist. So you will have a lot of, these kinds of proteins that are aqua channels, channels for water to move, to exit out of these cells. So you'll have a different makeup than, you know, a skin cell, for example. Skin cell will have a different makeup. And that is dependent on the DNA and what parts of the DNA are read. Uh, okay, physical nature and chemical nature of proteins. What else we got here in the notes? Let me see here. What else are we supposed to be talking about here? Okay. Um, so uh, we talked about what makes up a cell membrane. Membrane proteins, glycoproteins, uh, integral proteins, cholesterol. Um, well, we have to talk about, I guess we've got to talk about diffusion, but that is in, uh, that is in the next unit. So. I think that is about all I want to say. How long is this video? Ooh, 18 minutes. Uh, so familiarize yourself with uh, the function and the components of plasma membranes.